The Great Depression. The 1930s became known as the Great Depression. The boom of the 1920s had busted, ending a period of great prosperity. Many people lost all the money they had invested in American companies and had saved in the banks. Many people lost all the money they had. It was the beginning of the worst economic crisis in the history of the United States. Thousands of Americans lost everything they had. Millions of workers lost their jobs. Like the spreading ripples that form when a stone is dropped into a pond, the shock waves caused by the Great Depression affected every person. The rich became the new middle class, the middle class became the new poor, and the poor became hungry, homeless wanderers. The Causes of the Great Depression The economy is interesting. The economy operates in a cyclical fashion and gives us indicators as to when we are moving toward a major economic change. The business cycle operates in a wave or a circle, moving from prosperity into recession, to depression, back into recession, expansion, prosperity, recession, depression, and so forth. Just like any wave, a high peak is followed by a low trough. How we react to those indicators determines so much of how the economy reacts. The economy is fascinating in that so much of its strength depends on the people's faith in it. If we think the economy is strong, it has the potential to be strong. If we panic and think the economy is weakening, it will. Money and its value are just an idea that we collectively believe in. So much about the strength of the economy relies on consumer confidence and market predictions. The major causes of the Great Depression. Uh, the first indicator that the United States might fall into depression was the global economic depression that began after World War I. Um, and in the United States, farmers are struggling throughout the 1920s. We have an overproduction not only in the farm sector, but also in industrialization. We then tried to buy up some of this excess product through consumer credit spending, which inflated the GDP. And at the same time, we have a widening gap between the rich and the poor. The final death knell to the boom of the 1920s was the stock market crash of 1929. Global depression after World War I. The Great War had left the treasuries of Europe drained. The world entered an economic downturn. The war-torn nations had to rebuild their economies and their nations. Germany was particularly hard hit due to the demands of reparations established in the Treaty of Versailles. In addition, inflation, which is defined as a general increase in prices and fall in the purchasing value of money, was rampant around the globe, making it even more difficult for nations to recover. Nations were looking for any way to promote their recovery and ramp up their personal production. One of the tools that many nations turned to were high protective tariffs. Due to this increase in competition from a flood of products in the market, nations enacted these protective tariffs to encourage people to buy locally produced goods and locally sourced farm products. International trade slowed down dramatically, hurting all nations ability to recover and leaving u.s farmers and industries with excess products the real first indicator of um, the 1920s being really a false prosperity was the problems that were developing on american farms which began as early as the mid-1920s farmers were producing way too much 
having ramped up farm production to meet the demands of Europe during the Great War, Euros U.S. farmers had invested in machines and the expansion of farmlands. After demand from Europe dropped, farmers did not significantly decrease production and prices began to fall. Here you can see an excess of cotton bales, uh, the vast amount of cotton production that was taking place. Farm prices fell about 50% throughout the 1920s. And this is basic supply and demand. When you have an overproduction or an oversupply of a product, the prices on that product fall dramatically. When you have a shortage of that product, demand is high and prices rise. As a result of these falling um, farm prices, farm incomes also fell. And as farm incomes fell, farmers' abilities to pay their mortgages and farm equipment loans became more and more difficult. As a result, farm foreclosures increased. Local banks began to foreclose on the farmers who had taken out loans against their property and also uh, loans for business expansion. The banks that catered to farmers were the first to begin to fail during the 1920s. These problems were early indicators that the prosperity of the 1920s was a false prosperity. People became both homeless and jobless with the loss of their farms. One of the ways that um, farmers and businesses, well, really businesses, tried to deal with the issue of overproduction was the expansion of consumer credit. And um, consumer credit spending gave an additional false sense of prosperity. And in, to encourage Americans to buy this surplus of consumer products, companies began massive campaigns in advertising and encouraged people to buy their products through credit spending. Consumers were bombarded by advertising. People were constantly reminded about all the products they just had to have. Everything could now be financed through buy now, pay later programs. Radios, appliances, tires, cars, you name it, you could finance it. Most financing was done through the manufacturers or through local retail outlets in the form of store credit. Credit cards did not yet exist. Model T's were relatively inexpensive and they could be paid for by monthly installments. Additionally, the wealth of the boom economy was increasingly concentrated in the hands of a small portion of the population. There was a large working class and a small middle class. The top 1% controlled 70% of all the wealth generated. Personal debt increased as people financed more and more of their purchases. Wages were not keeping pace with inflation, and people became more and more reliant on credit. The Roaring Twenties came to a crashing halt on October 29, 1929. That was the day the stock market crashed. Stock prices had been climbing steadily for months, but the prices did not reflect the true value of the stock. Much of this increase was caused by stock speculators, investors willing to take big risks in hopes of making huge profits. Most stock speculators bought on margin, in which a small down payment was made, and the balance was financed through a bank loan. When the price of stock rose, the speculator would pay off the loan. However, if the price of the stock fell, the speculator would be out his or her initial investment and would continue to owe the bank money. On October 24, 1929, a sudden wave of selling stock took place as investors lost confidence that stock prices would go higher. The market recovered slightly over the next few trading days, but on October 29th, forevermore called Black Tuesday, the bottom dropped out of the stock market. Over 16 million shares were traded that day as panic swept across Wall Street. Day after day, prices continued to drop. By year's end, the overall value of stocks had dropped by $40 billion. The average share of stock was worth about half of its value before the great stock market crash. This caused people to panic. They rushed to the banks to pull out their money, but the banks ran out of money. 
banks only have to hold a percentage of cash on hand of the deposits that are actually recorded. Banks began to fail. They ran out of money. They closed their doors. They went bankrupt. Many people lost their entire life savings. Many people were ruined. Investors lost almost all their wealth in one day. The divorce rate and the suicide rate increased as people lost hope in the future and feel that they had failed their families. By 1933, the depression had hit rock bottom. More than 5,000 banks had closed. About 9 million savings accounts were lost when the banks failed. Over 90,000 businesses were wiped out. Thousands of farms and homes were lost as banks foreclosed on people's mortgages. Approximately one out of four workers were unemployed and net family income dropped 50%. Stay tuned for our next installment, Conditions During the Great Depression.